Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we calculated the probability that the outcome will be equal to a 4 when we had the number of trials being 14 and the probability of success being 0.5. This, of course, was for a binomial distribution, and it ended up being a probability of 6.11%. Now, we're claiming that we could do the same thing using the normal distribution, as long as n is large enough, and even with a small number, like n being 14, we should get a result fairly close to that. So here we have a normal distribution, and so in order to find the probability that the outcome will be 4, the boundaries of our region will be from 3.5 to 4.5, because we want to place it right in the middle, so that 4 is exactly in the middle of those two endpoints. Now what we need to find is we need to find the z-value from the mean to the first boundary and the z-value from the mean to the second boundary because it's with the z-value and the table that we can then find the area underneath the curve. But first, before we do that, we need to find the mean that can be found by n times p and the standard deviation. So let's calculate those first. So n is equal to, or not n, but the mean the mean is equal to n times p, n is 14, the probability of success is 0 0.5, so we get the mean equal to 7. And the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the number of trials, the probability of success, times the probability of failure, so it's the square root of 14 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. So that would be equal to the square root, the square root of 3.5. So let's find out what that is equal to. 1.871. That's close enough. 1.87. We'll just call it 1.87 because the numbers don't need to be absolutely accurate. So 1.87 would be the result of that. All right, that's good enough. So. Now we need to find the two z values. So we remember that z is equal to x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So we're going to calculate it for the first value, being 4.5. So z uh, is equal to 4.5 minus 7 divided by 1.87. Now we're going to get a negative number, but for the table it doesn't matter. Negative and positive will give you the same values. So 4.5 minus 7 and divide by 1.87 is 1.337. So that would be a negative 1.337. We do the same for x equals 3.5 minus 7 divided by 1.87. So that is equal to 3.5 divided by 1.87 and that gives us 1.872 1.872 all right <clears throat> minus 1.872 did i get that right yes all right so now we have the two z values for the two boundaries so now we're going to use a table to find the corresponding areas so first of all we're going to find this area and let's call it area one and then we're going to find this area which is area two that would be the, the area between here and here, and the area between the, those two. And then, of course, to find the area of the strip, we need to take the difference. Remember, we learned how to do that a few videos ago. Okay, so now we need a table. 1.337. So I can find 1.33, 1, 1, 2, 3, and 1.334. So for Z equals 1.330 because that's all I have on my table so 1, 2, 3 I get 408.24 okay, I get 0 0.408.24 mm -hmm. and for Z equals 1.3 Four zero, the next one over, I get 40988. 
But notice I have 1.337. So I need to extrapolate. I need 7 tenths the way from there to there. So I need to take the difference, the delta, the delta, which is equal to 988 minus 824. That would be 164. That would be for the last three decimal places. And I need to multiply that times 7 tenths. So what is that equal to? So 164 times 0.7 is equal to 115. I'm going to add that to the lower value to get z equals 1.337. Now I have extrapolated it, so that becomes 0 0.40939. Okay, I need to do the same thing for my next z value, 1.872. So z equals 1.870 and z equals 1.880 and then I need to find it for z equals 1.872 so again I need the table 1.87 1.87 is 0 0.40 I need to put on my glasses because those letters are getting too hard to read <coughs> 1.870 that would be 46926, 0 0.46926, and for 1.88, 46995. The delta, so what's the difference between the two? The delta is equal to 995, ooh, that's a much smaller delta, isn't it? 995. 92526, that would be 69. And notice that 1872, that means I need the delta. It's right here. Uh, let me wait for a moment. The delta multiplied times 2 tenths because 72 is 2 tenths from 70 to 80. So 2 tenths. And Let's see here, so 69 times 0.2, it gives me 14. I'm going to add that to this value right here, so it gives me 0 0.46940, and that's the Z value for 1.872. Let me check this real quick again for 187, 926, 88, 995. Okay. All right, so now I have the two z values right here and right here, which gives me those two areas. So this is for A1, so that means that A1 is equal to 40.939% of the total area, and for A2 that is equal to 46.995% of the total area, now if I take the difference between them, that difference should be the same result that I got on the previous video when I used the binomial expansion method. So let's try that. Let's take the difference between those two. So 46.995 minus 40.939 equals, and I get the delta, so the area, which represents the probability of getting a 4, the outcome being 4, that is equal to 6.06%. Now notice how close we got. The actual number is 6.11. Our approximation, using a very small number of trials, being 14, 6.06, .06, we almost got the same result using the techniques of the normal distribution versus using the techniques of the the uh, binomial distribution. So you can see that it seems to work quite well and as the number of trials increases the numbers will get closer and closer and closer together. So it's a good method and it's actually a faster method as n becomes very large. It's not as fast as n is small because it's probably easier just to use the binomial distribution method but as n gets to be really big it much more mirrors a normal distribution and those techniques will then be quicker and easier to use 
And that is how it's done.